Making the ghost action. They're going to run a float pass. New side. Touchdown! Kansas City! Patrick Mahomes, a 17th career postseason touchdown pass. The most in NFL history in a player's first four seasons, finding Kelsey wide open. That was part of an unforgettable night back in January as the Chiefs won the AFC for a second consecutive year and punched their ticket to the Super Bowl. Of course, we all know what happened in Tampa. It didn't go the way we hoped, but the beauty of the offseason is that it gives you an opportunity to get better, and that's exactly what the Chiefs did this week. Hey, everybody, and welcome into the first offseason episode of The Breakdown. My name is Matt McMullen, and today we're talking about the Chiefs' moves along the offensive line, both of which became official on Thursday as Joe Tooney and Kyle Long each put pen to paper. Look, it's no secret that the Chiefs' injuries up front contributed to their loss in Super Bowl 55. The offense couldn't get much going with the Tampa pass rush consistently getting pressure. It was a problem, and these moves are a big step forward to make sure that never happens again. Now, before we jump into it, we can't talk about the offensive line without first mentioning the departures of Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz. It's tough. There's no way around it. These guys were cornerstones who helped build the Chiefs into what they are today. So saying goodbye isn't fun. It also creates a challenge. The Chiefs are essentially remaking their entire offensive line, but signing Tooney and Long is a great start. Sure, they're not offensive tackles, although both can play there if needed, which we'll talk about later, but solidifying the middle of the offensive line with elite talent has ripple effects throughout the entire offense, and I think it will pay dividends as the 2021 season unfolds. I think it's great for Patrick Mahomes and Clyde edwards helaire specifically, and when those two have time and space to move, that's good for everybody. All right, let's start with Tooney, who joins the Chiefs after five spectacular seasons in New England. He was a second-team All-Pro in 2019, and entering this offseason, the folks at Pro Football Focus listed him as the number 13 overall free agent on the open market. Their analysis was simple enough, too, citing Tooney as one of the best guards in the NFL who should fit well into any system. So, with all that in mind, here's what he had to say when asked, why Kansas City? It's always been such a great organization, huge fan base, and... um you know, just want to be part of this team that has had so much success recently. And um, I know there's a lot of special players here and a lot of special coaches. And, um, you know, just the whole community seems to rally around KC and um, just want to, you know, do what I can to help the team. He's a humble guy at the mic and a man of few words, but this dude is a monster on the field. Let's start with his durability. He hasn't missed a start in his five-year career, suiting up for 80 consecutive regular season games. In fact, according to Next Gen Stats, only the Eagles' Jason Kelsey, Travis Kelsey's brother, has tallied more snaps along the offensive line than Tooney since 2016. And not only is he reliable, he's consistently brilliant. Tooney is widely regarded as one of the top guards in all of football, as demonstrated by his All-Pro nod in 2019. He's allowed three total sacks in the last three seasons combined, and he's only been flagged a grand total of three times over the last two seasons. His versatility is also a plus, which can't be overstated. While primarily a guard in his career, Tooney started two games at center last season and played every position up front in college at NC State. And when asked, he's here to play wherever the Chiefs need him. Like I said, you know, I just want to help the team out whatever I can in any capacity and, um, you know, just just want to contribute to winning. And, um, you know, that's, that's really my main thing. So whatever, wherever that is, that's fine with me. Lastly, this dude is a winner. I know that's cliche, but you can't have enough guys like that in your locker room, and Tooney certainly fits the bill. He started 10 playoff games and won two Super Bowls with the Patriots, and he's also the only guy in NFL history to begin his career with three straight Super Bowl appearances. The guy checks every box, and at just 28 years old, he's an investment in not only this season, but the future as well. Now let's talk about Long, who actually retired following the 2019 season after seven years with the Chicago Bears, but who's now back for a second stint as a pro. He had his pick of suitors, too. In fact, Long met with the Las Vegas Raiders before his visit to Kansas City, but after meeting with Coach Reed and the staff, he decided this is where he wanted to be. If it feels awkward landing in a, in a city that you don't consider home, but when you walk into this building here in Kansas City, it becomes apparent that things are different here and sitting in coach Reed's office I just knew this is where I wanted to be and if they wanted to have me I was going to do everything in my power to make this happen all right first of all the culture and the atmosphere long described there that's special you can't just create that overnight it takes years of building years of buy-in from the locker room and it takes winning 
The Chiefs have all of that, and it was clearly attractive to Long. Now, if you don't know much about Kyle, you probably know a thing or two about his family. His dad is former Raiders great and Pro Football Hall of Famer Howie Long, and his brother, Chris Long, the number two overall pick in the 2008 draft, is a two-time Super Bowl champ. There are some lofty standards to meet in the Long family, but Kyle is just as impressive. A former first-round pick, Kyle made the Pro Bowl in each of the first three seasons of his career from 2013 to 2015. Injuries limited Long's ability to stay on the field in the four seasons after that, but when he was out there, the dude was awesome, earning a top 15 pass blocking grade from Pro Football Focus in 2016 and 2018. And like Tooney, the guy is versatile. In fact, he played the entire 2015 season at right tackle for Chicago and earned himself a trip to the Pro Bowl, so he's proven that he can play outside if needed and do so at a high level. The guy is one of the best overall linemen in the game when he's healthy, and while he said the past year away from football was a great opportunity to spend time with his family, he's also been using it to get ready for this very moment. Yeah, well, I, I immediately got with Olin Krutz, uh, former Bears legend, uh, center, great man, and I started training with him. I, I got down to about 270 pounds, and he looked at me with a with with that look like you you want to play football you're 270 he said don't come back in here looking to train for football unless you're 300 pounds so I've been out in Scottsdale Arizona I've been eating a lot training every day um, doing doing a lot of things to build up my lower half um, I understand what it takes to play in this game and have success um, and not relative success I know what it takes to be dominant in this in this game and I, I just I've been Rocky four in it, man, just locking myself in that cabin and getting after it. Uh, had some great conversations with some tremendous support systems with my brother, my mom, and my younger brother, Howie, um, and my dad, of course. And I know what it was going to take, and I was willing to do the work, and now I get a second opportunity here. Just hearing Long speak, it's clear this dude has an edge that I think will fit great with the Chiefs locker room. He's a leader, he's an energy giver, and he's a guy who can back up his words with his performance on the field. Additionally, less than a day into his decision, he was already getting to know Joe Tooney over, what else, some Kansas City barbecue. I got to meet Joe last night, and if there's one thing I know about Joe Tooney before I even got to meet him was that he was tough, he was intelligent, and he loves the game of football. He played under a tremendous offensive line coach, Dante Scarnecchia in New England uh, for the entirety of his career. Uh, I've seen him in joint practices before. I know how he works. So last night when I had the opportunity to meet him and break some bread with him over some some barbecue, it was uh, felt like he wasn't a stranger, and I don't think I felt like a stranger to him. I uh, look forward to being able to just join that offensive line room and get in where you fit in. Now, I think it's important to keep in mind that this is just the beginning of a very long process. We're not sure yet how the offensive line is going to look in 2021. Laurent Duvernay-Tardif is under contract and represents a solid option at guard too. Lucas Niang, who the Chiefs drafted in the third round last year, is a guy who I'm really excited about and who has versatility to play all over the line. Don't forget about Martinez Rankin either. He's a guy who came off an injury last year but should continue to improve heading into 2021. There's still a ton that needs to play out, moves to be made, and competition to be had, but the bottom line is this. The Chiefs offensive line got better on Thursday, and I can't wait to see how this offseason continues to unfold. That's all for this one, everybody. Thanks so much for listening, as always. Stay close to Twitter. I'm sure four or five moves have happened already since I recorded this. And enjoy this process. This team is hungry to get back on top, and the front office is making that abundantly clear. Until next time, this is Matt McMullen signing off.